Okay, you know, uh, when we started uh, and said we want to run this event this year, we, we said we're going to do it all physical, right? We, last year, we did hybrid and it nearly drove us mad. But ironically, our next speaker is the only one who can't be with us on site. Can you believe it? He's the vice president of events at Marina Bay Sands. I mean, honestly. But so, because he is with Marina Bay Sands, we will be trying to bring him in today, and we hope that the technology works. So welcome to the new world of events. Please welcome Ong Wee Min, Vice President, Conventions and Exhibitions for Marina Bay Sands. We men, I cannot believe, what the hell are you doing in that cubicle when you should be here on stage with me? Hi, Sihun. Nice to see you. Nice to see you again. I'm sorry, I'm uh, stuck in uh, Paris. Uh, I was on transit from Cannes, uh, and um, well, wonders of technology, both <laughs> the flights as well as the hologram. You see, flights, he couldn't get on a flight from, are you in Paris? Are you out there shopping? No, 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 I wish I was, uh, but I was there. Uh, as part of the Singapore team to receive the good news uh, that Singapore and, and Marina Bay Sands has been, uh, uh, will be the proud home of the Tax Free World Association. Wow, all the way to 2028 and beyond. Well, congratulations and thanks be for being with us, really, in spirit and psychic body. H how cool is this, guys? Right? Come on, this is the first hologram at WIT. You're witnessing a hologram technology. You know, last year we had that big, those big panels. Hologram is so much better, right? So, so we mean, I think I'm sure our audience is asking, right? You know, how does this, like, how expensive is this and how does it work technically? Well, uh, all you actually need is a camera, both ends, a camera on, on your end to capture you, camera on my end um, for you to see me, uh, a stable internet connection. Uh, in fact, this, this mobile kit works uh, off a 5G uh, uh, handphone. Just plug in your handphone, uh, two laptops connecting to each other and talking to each other, and, um, and there you have real-time conversation. Oops, oops, you know. oops. I think I, oops. I feel some interruption. I, I hear some interruption. I can't hear you very well. I don't know what's happening. Oh, my God. You see? Technology, right? You can never rely on it. I mean, so now I have to improvise. What the hell am I going to do? How am I going to talk about the New World events? But anyway, well... Well, we try and bring him back somehow. I'm pleased to report that this year, we worked with Thrust Carbon on an event audit to measure our carbon footprint. And I know it's not perfect. I know that some people really hate carbon credits, but I just feel that we all have to take baby steps, right? Whether it's the, I mean, uh, I think Chia Sien said it yesterday at the, um, from Sentosa. And he says, never mind if people say you're greenwashing, but at least try and do something, and that's this our attempt, and this is our event audit that we did. It went, did it over uh, four weeks of meetings. It was pretty complex, complicated. We know it's not perfect, but this is our first attempt, and we will be offsetting the carbon footprint as a result. So basically, all of you will be helping us make this event a more sustainable event, and if all event organizers can do that, I think, and that industry associations can come on, then I think we've got a movement. Am I good at improvising? <laughs> Give me some encouragement. Oh my God, we mean, how the hell? How the hell did you appear here? Well, I, I, I made a Look flight, at right? that. I mean, <laughs> come on, he beamed in. This is a magic show, right? <laughs> we made him appear. We made him appear, we mean. Good to be here. Wow, welcome to live event. Yes, yes. Uh, for the record, I really did land today. I landed at 8.50 p.m. <laughs> uh, a.m. today uh, in the airport. So, yes. Well, we wanted to kind of just show that technology, even if women had missed his flight, that we could also have a conversation. But don't you prefer him here? What do you think? Do you prefer the hologram or here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, I prefer to be here as well. Wow, so, okay. Yeah. All right, so... You know, hologram, you've been using it at Marina Bay Sands for, for a while. And I, I know that you also uh, held a MICE 2025, the way you're brainstorming yep. for the future events with key customers and all that. So how do they see this brave new world of events? In fact, uh, it included you. Uh, we did it um, 
we did a couple of weeks ago with a couple of top leaders, both internationally and locally, and um, to, of course, review what the world of events will be in the post-pandemic world. Uh, the good news is face-to-face uh, -face is here to stay. Um, at least that's the good news in some form. Uh, the bad news is uh, it's not just face-to-face. -face. Uh, we, are, we are now part of uh, only channel of, uh, of uh, engagement uh, methodologies that event organizers use. So the successful events, MICE events of the future, is not just the face-to-face. -face. Um, taking, taking an example of how we used to do it pre-COVID, you, you did all your fireside chats, you know, uh, and, 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 and um, all your small events in different parts of the world. Uh, during the pandemic period, you did it online as well. Uh, I remember uh, right, uh, being reviewed on, I think, episode six, if I'm not wrong. Yes. Uh, and uh, so the, the new world of events uh, would be like how WIT used to do it or how WIT has been doing all these years, um, using the online content as an uh, uh, online channel uh, as a way uh, to drive your content and your story, drive your content and your st the stories of your community, your stakeholders, your sponsors uh, to your specific community and, uh, and growing that story in preparation for the Tempo event, which is today. Yeah, and, and it really enabled us to you know, build small communities around, you know, the, the virtual event, right? And then eventually, this small communities co sort of came together for the big Correct. event. And I think that's, the, that's what, you know, the hybrid world affords event organizers. Correct. But you look at the word hybrid. Hybrid is, hybrid is a production term, you know? Um, hybrid is not UX, or hybrid is not the way we deliver the events. And if you take a step back, in the past, it has always been the case. Small communities existed within your WIT community, uh, each interested in a certain small content, a small part of what the entire WIT story is all about. And they have been engaged, and they have been, they have been engage, engage, engaging with each other. It's just that we were never part of the conversation. So in the MICE future, uh, we have to be part of the conversation um, to be successful. If not, uh, there will be people coming in our space and uh, taking this off our plate. Yeah, so, but actually this new world has actually opened up a new market opportunity for you that you never had before because oh, yes. in the past it was just physical, right? Yep. And now you're actually able to have a, a, a bigger market uh, to, to address. Yes, don't, don't tell that to my shareholders. So we're in budgeting season now. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we had Brenda Quack yesterday of Ernst and Young speaking, uh, and clearly there's a lot of revenge conferencing going on, and I know that you're packed back to back. This, this whole two weeks. But, you know, she believes that as it normalizes, we will actually go into a hybrid and make the best use of virtual and best use of physical together. So how are you preparing, you know, in, in your venue for bridging those two worlds? Uh, well, a typical venue, this venue and any other venue in the world, we are a 2D venue, meaning, you know, it's just square meters. Uh, in the venues of the future, we have to prepare for, um, to to be able to enable digital connections, uh, to enable the, the communities that our clients represent. You know, uh, we must be able to enable them to be able to meet virtually, digitally, you know, however you term that, um, without being physically here, here during the 365 days. So during the WIT community, uh, our WIT event itself, we are here face to face you know, um, for, uh, for a couple of days. Uh, and in the 360 days that this community is not meeting, we have to find a way to work out with you how we can be part of the conversation, how we can serve as a platform yeah. to empower you and to enable you to connect. And I remember last year, you know, when we did our WIT, you actually launched a virtual meeting platform and we were the first event to use that virtual meeting platform. But it was very, very hard to get engagement on that because, you know, it was basically virtual but skinned differently. So do you feel that the metaverse uh, will offer you a deeper, richer opportunity for engagement with the virtual oh, definitely. audience. Definitely. The metaverse does open up some, some opportunity. It asks some questions as well. How do we engage our stakeholders in a more meaningful manner? Um, you know, if you look at the metaverse itself, two avatars moving, you know, talking to each other, um, what value does it bring to the actual conversation? Uh, that's a golden question that every single event organizer and every single planner would have to answer. Uh, it varies from community to community because the accepting, acceptance rate and ratio of uh, technology, uh, of digital ad adoption within different com communities uh, are different. You know, interesting, uh, for events, one of the key drivers are medical meetings. Um, um, and you know, because the doctors have to meet in order to transact knowledge, in order to gain points. 
and in order to have those points to be relevant and to be able to practice again. Uh, during the pandemic period, uh, they moved away from that. Um, right. And now medical organizers are asking themselves, is the huge 20,000 people face-to-face -face event necessary just for the transaction of knowledge? Because you, you, could, you could consume knowledge, content, uh, and, uh, and gain your CMEs, uh, which is the, 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 the continuing medical uh, education credits, online, 365 days, 24-7, on demand. So imagine you having to go to the cinema just to catch you know, um, Jurassic Park or Jurassic World, or, or Top Gun, you know. Now you have that, uh, you, you, you still go to the cinema, uh, but you do have the option to, of, of Netflix um, and other yeah. streaming platforms. So it really depends on the appetite of that community and the desire by that community to engage with tech, right? Which is why I guess, you know, even we talk about our event app, you know, uh, Jubilee was saying that they see the highest adoption and engagement at a conference like ours. So are you therefore working with tech conferences, which are really like, or gaming conferences, to really test some of these new technologies? Of course, uh, we're working with a lot of uh, our clients to test bit certain small technology. Um, Tell us uh, about an interesting new technology that you're test bedding. A, a good use case was you, you know, we tested the, uh, the virtual meeting place. You're the first of many clients to use that as a virtual extension uh, of the physical week meeting itself. Um, and some of these clients have, uh, have uh, moved on, they have um, put in a small little uh, innovation behind the technology to drive, uh, to drive a richer connection. Um, some trade show organizers, you know, uh, they see greater engagement of their communities around regular buying cycles. So um, if the regular buying cycle of an event is hypothetically in autumn, um, you know, the, the engagement online on that online platform peaks just before autumn, during the, the, during the peak of autumn and, and, and tapers off that. So it's about the, the use of technology, use of data, and how to use those data to help the communities drive more business, drive more network, right. and drive more connections. So yesterday too, we were talking about a new form of tech, like storytelling tech, right? That can transform spaces. And I know that your Sky Park, for example, became a, a cinema. And it's still a cinema on certain nights where you use a Cinewave audio tech. So do you, are you envisaging that you will be able to use storytelling tech and all that to activate all the wonderful spaces you have around here? Oh, definitely. Um, in the past, we used to look at this ballroom as just a ballroom. It's a place where uh, we could have conferences and dinners um, and, and, and meetings. Um, and the Sky Park as an observation deck where you could literally pay a fee and be there. Yeah. You know, um, the, the pandemic will have showed us that these are, not fear, uh, these are not just pure meeting spaces. These are assets. So you need to look at asset for what it is uh, and uh, to activate that using storytelling, using different, different use cases, and using these different places slightly differently. It's not just the Sky Park, it's not just the event plaza or the ballroom, it's also the entire bay area that we have around us. How we could work collaboratively with the Gardens by the Bay you know, uh, to drive uh, richer connections with, uh, with our clients, wh whatever that meant. Uh you know, and I think it's great because it allows us to repurpose, uh, you know, spaces instead of building another new convention center or something else, right? You know, that we can repurpose the spaces. So I was reading an article um, in a meetings publication that said that the future, given the environmental concerns, and, and thank you uh, for working with us on the event audit. You know, we needed your, your input uh, a lot to, to do that event audit. But basically, they said the future was less emphasis on physical, smaller regional meetings and less focus on the international visitors. So how are you addressing these concerns? Um, I think I, I'd like to uh, um, address some of those points. Um, I do think that there will be more regional meetings um, due to the fact that you know, communities get smaller and you know, it's easier to meet within a particular geographical region. Because the thirst for, for content, the thirst for business, the thirst for networks is there. And the pandemic showed us that one doesn't need to wait for the big international meeting. We will probably see the strengthening of international brands, uh, big meeting brands around. Um, big brands like Rotary, for example, uh, they will get stronger because the brand is there. Uh, they will also split out into smaller meetings around, around uh, the region. Million Dollar Roundtable is another good story. Uh, um, big gathering of uh, um, very high-performing insurance agents uh, once a year, uh, and they have started to meet regularly around the region in more regular uh, times, rather than just that one mega gathering around um, okay. in, in probably three days in a year or so. 
So we have a lot of organizations here who hold meetings, clearly, you know, I mean, whether it's their internal meeting or industry meetings and all that. So what would be the one piece of advice that you would uh, give them, you know, as we get into this new world of events? Um, don't, don't, don't use the pre-pandemic lens and look at how we plan an event, um, number one. Um, number two, um, we used to say content is king. Uh, during the pre-pandemic world, we have great content, people will come. Um, sorry guys, content is free. Uh, <laughs> pandemic showed us that. Thanks, we women. It <laughs> uh, it's about how you engage, uh, use content, string stories around it. You know, what is your content story? String data stories around it. You know? um, and that's what, what will empower you, the organizer, to be able uh, to continually attract more, uh, more visitors. So if the audience here is not being wowed by your storytelling, you fail and you fail in the next year and the year after because they say, ah, I'd rather get that content online, on demand, as and when I want it, rather than come physically for the event. So it's about the emotion that you can get from people at an at event, whether it's virtual or physical, but physical is probably the best vehicle to convey emotion. Because physical gives you the chance of bumping into each other you know, in the walkway, unplanned, you know, unscheduled, hey, let's get a beer at the bar. No. That, that hasn't changed. And it was interesting <laughs> because during the brainstorming, we had so many people who came in with like avatars and it was very futuristic, right? The, some of the vision. But at the end of it, everybody said, well, you know, let's leave our avatar maybe plugged into a pod and they can download the content into their heads. But then me, the physical me, I leave my digital twin to work and then the physical me go out and party. Yep. because that's what humans are wired to be social. We are social empathic. creatures. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much. It wasn't it great to have women here, but to also see the hologram in action. Thank you, women, for your partnership. It's been incredible. It's been an incredible partnership. And I look forward to more, to right. test bet that metaverse. Yes, sure. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you.